nice to be with you this morning. And I know there's a, quite a few people traveling, so it's a little bit thinner, but so grateful that you're here this morning. One of the passages that the Lord reminded me of this week was from John 17, when Jesus was praying. And he prayed for not only the disciples, because he knew he was going to the cross, and he prayed not only for the disciples, that they would be strong, but he prayed for any believer that would come into God's family through, through the rest of, of time, that they would understand this wonderful bond of love that God offers to every person. And, and you know, we are not, um, we, we are people who are free to love God. Every day you can, you can step out into a new place in that love and, and receive him and enjoy him and let him enjoy you. You do realize that's a reciprocal thing. And, and so when I was reading that passage, I thought to myself, God, bring us to that place in love. Bring us to that unity of the faith where we all understand this love that, that we can't afford. It is absolutely a gift. We can't earn it. There's nothing we can do about it. And help us to find our worth and value in your love, oh God. Amen? So let's join our hearts together and pray. Lord, as we quiet our, our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions, and just pray for your spirit to be free to move in us. That you might speak a word in due season into us, Lord. Into us. You are with us. The Holy One with us. We are never alone. We, we face nothing on our own. We face everything with you as believers. And so this morning, we just thank you. We praise you, oh God, that you are so faithful and so driven to love us. Help us to be passionate in our love for you and to step forward to just to be vessels of your love and goodness and kindness in a world that really is quite ignorant of you. We don't want to live at that shallow level, O oh Lord. We want to live in a level that is worthy of your amazing grace and love, your faithfulness, O oh God. And we know that we grow in that every day as we rest in you and we rely on you. We abide with you. Help us to grab today from your holy word a better vision of our worth and value and the extent that you go to bring us to that place, a place where you can love us more deeply. Because when we allow you to love us more deeply, we can love more deeply. So help us, God, to get out of the shallow waters today and allow you to break those chains. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So um, when you think about worth and value, your worth and value, do you understand that it has very little to do with you and everything to do with God? Everything to do with God. Your part is to receive him, to allow him to make that place. See, he's the one who makes us worthy, amen? He's the one who brings us the treasure, the inheritance, the value of heaven. He brings that. And we have this extraordinary invitation of God to come into that relationship with him and to begin to taste just how good is our God. Amen? He is great. He is good. And he longs to live life in and through us. So we sit back today and we're going to go to the scriptures and we're going to look at some things that God values. Who does God value? Who does he value? He values everyone. He values us whether we value him or not. He values us whether or not we live for him or choose him. He values us if we reject him. He values us if we, ex we soar with him. He values his creation. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am his creation. So in our passage today, we're going to see that he values and calls uh, forth the worth of, this, of, of a slave girl. He shows and demonstrates his love and value and, and the worth of his disciples. And he brings value and worth to a law-abiding guard who is desperate. 
Now the girl's desperate, the guard is desperate, but the disciples find themselves in peace while in prison. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. It's a lesson of deliverance. Acts 16, 16 through 34. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. We earned, she earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Now for a moment there, you might think that that is something that's good. But let's continue. This went on day and after day, and Paul got so exasperated that he turned and he said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly, it left her. This is an evil spirit, according to the word of God. It's an, it's an evil one, and God has not used uh, his opponents to tell the good news. He uses his disciples to tell the good news. And we're going to see uh, that this young girl has a wrong spirit, a constricting spirit. And in fact, it's, it's called a, 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 a basically a python spirit, a constricting spirit, who has taken a hold of her and causing her to be uh, lucrative for her masters, but enslaved in her very own soul. We'll look at that further, too. Her masters, hopes of wealth, are now shattered. They grab Paul and Silas, and they drag them out before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city's in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us as Romans to practice. We have to know that it was a Roman law that... Uh, that uh, the, no one was to make converts uh, of the Romans. Verse 22, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them to be stripped, beaten with wooden rods, and they were severely beaten. Then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them in an inner dungeon and clamped their feet in stock. Around midnight... Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. You think God is in all of this? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, suddenly. Do you like suddenlies? I like suddenlies. Amen? I am all about the suddenly. I'm looking for God suddenly in my life all the time, and you ought to be looking for his suddenly in yours. Suddenly he turns things around. Suddenly he makes things right. Suddenly he makes his presence in them known. He is, wants to make his presence known through you too. Suddenly there's a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All of the doors immediately flew open. The chains of every prisoner fell off, and the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, and he ran to the dungeon. He fell trembling um, down before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them out, and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in the household. And even at the hour of the night, the jailer cared for them. He washed their wounds, and then everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house, and he set a meal before them, and he is in, in his entire household rejoiced because they had all believed in God. They all became believers in God. Let's think about the slave girl, Paul and Silas, and the jailer for just a minute. 
Here's this young woman. She, has, he, she is a slave in the world system. She's, ex, she's um, used to gain money. Her, her owners use her to gain money. Don't, they don't care that she's got a demon. They don't care anything about it. They don't care that she has no freedom, no life beyond what they can use her for. She's a slave. And she needs deliverance. She needs deliverance. But in the story, it sounds like she's just a casualty of all of it. She's made Paul upset, agitated. Because she is, this demon in her has all the freedom. But we know that Paul is on a mission. His mission is to glorify the Lord. Wherever he goes, he's going to glorify the Lord. Can I tell you it's okay to get upset sometimes at the, de the depravity that people find themselves in, how other people use people in bad ways? It's okay for you to get upset about that. And it's okay for you to pray for their deliverance, amen? We need to be willing to step out all the time and go like, no, that just is not right. I'm praying that up. The Apostle Paul sees what's going on, and there are a lot of different teachings about it. But the point I want to make today is that Paul, he, he cares more about her worth and value than her owners. He cares more about her, and he's going to set her free. And we do not hear a whole lot about her later. But know this, she's set free from the demon, but she's still locked into this slavery that her owners put her in. And we know that God loves her because he set her free in the first level. How many times has God taken you and just little by little set you free from stuff? Hasn't he? He's, for my, for in my life, he has done me, I mean, like he has taken me from one thing and he's lifted it and delivered me from something and then I find myself in something else and he lifts it and he takes it away from me and he just continues to deliver me, amen? And I know in my heart that this is not the end of this girl with God, however it is in our scripture. Can I tell you that God never lets go of us. When he delivers us and he sets us free, amen, he continues to love us in that place. Then we look at Paul and Silas, right? They're in prison, but they are free. They are free. They're in this earthly habitat of things, but they are free. God has set them free. They know their worth and value, and they know that God is with them, and they know that whatever's going on, even though the injustice that they suffered, they were beaten, they, are, they actually uh, did not deserve any of that. And by law, they should have never been beaten and put in jail without a fair trial. But God uses even the hardest places that we find ourselves for his glory, amen? He brings good out of it. And you sit back and go like, that doesn't sound very loving, Mary. It is loving when you look at the bigger picture. Can you look at the bigger picture when you have found yourself in a hard place? When you have found yourself struggling, can you look at the bigger picture to know that God is trying to love not just you, but others and set them free? Amen? That takes a lot of faith and loving God to, to, to come to that point. Because we just always seem to make it about ourselves, don't we? I'm going through this. And I need God to do something for me. But can I tell you that we're all connected and we see that all the time in the scriptures. And so God is going to do something in every one of their lives. And he's trying so hard to make a bigger picture. And Paul and Silas get it. They get it. Can I tell you, if you're willing to follow the Spirit, the Spirit is going to make you aware of things that are beyond you and, and that actually involves bringing liberation and deliverance to other people, of recognizing a way to reveal Christ in you to other people. You are a representative. Each one of us are representatives of Christ. So when we go through stuff, just as Paul and Silas, we might not find ourselves in prison. We might not find ourselves uh, beaten with wooden rods, okay? God help us. I hope that never happens, right? But 
we get beaten down all the time, don't we? Isn't the world's way and weighs down and beats us down and tries to stop our trust and our, our hope in God and, and the fact that God loves and values us and we sit back and we go like, I don't feel really uh, worth that worth and value right now because I'm going through stuff. Stop associating your worth and value with your situation. It isn't connected. You are, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you have a worth and value that's eternal. It is eternal. Nothing can change it. No situation, no hardship, no nothing. It's not going to change it. You are that, that recipient of God's you know, love that he's chosen to pour within you. And you and I can face anything, anything that we need to face in Christ Jesus. Amen? And Paul and Silas show us that all the time. They show us that throughout Scripture. So here they are in the jail. They are singing praises to God. If you were in that situation, would you be singing praises to God? Think about it. In an inner dungeon, very little light, stench galore, they are in stocks. They can't move. They can't really shift their weight. They are uncomfortable. And what are they doing? Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for your deliverance. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Thank you for being with me. Thank you that you are with us. Thank you that you are there working things out for us. Thank you that we are in your care. And suddenly... In the midst of that mindset, all is shaken. All is shaken. Now, did you know that your praise and your devotion to God shakes the world system? Did you know that God is all-powerful over all things and that when he decides to bless you, it doesn't matter what's going on, amen? It doesn't matter what's going on because he has authority over all things. And if you're dealing with sickness, if you're dealing with uh, emotional problems, if whatever you're dealing with, he can shake that up, amen? And I've watched him do it. I've been watching him do it. He is just so good. And so here he is, and he is loving these guys, and suddenly, suddenly, in the midst of the praise, there's freedom. And Paul and Silas could have run, couldn't they? Couldn't they have escaped? But what happened here? They cared more about this jailer who was going to be accountable and probably killed, right? Because if the prisoners go away, they're responsible for him, they would have killed him. And so Paul and Silas are there, don't harm yourself. We love you. We're here for you. Don't worry. Come on. God is with us. And he knew it, right? The jailer knew it. Oh, my gosh. I'm just like, when I think about this, I sit back and I go like, wow, God, look at you in this lesson. You are orchestrating the whole thing, and you make it all work together, and you're showing Paul and Silas, your faithfulness, and you're revealing your presence to the jailer, and, and, and all of it comes together. It's kind of like this revelation sandwich, isn't it, between the slave girl, Paul and Silas, and the guard, and it just all kind of goes together, and the substance of the whole thing is our loving God, our holy God, who really wants so much more for us than we want for ourselves, doesn't he? Does God want more for you than you want for yourself? Worth and value. The other day in our um, uh, Bible study, we're teaching on hearing the voice of God, and one of the uh, areas that we talked about was the comparison game and how we compare ourselves all the time to one another. Can I tell you, you if you do that, then you need to stop doing that because your worth and value isn't based on how you view somebody else or how somebody else views you. Your worth and value is based on your perception of God and how big of him that you let him live in and through you. That's your worth and value. The comparison game comes to, to knock you down and to stop you from the right progress. Comparison games 
They, when we compare ourselves to somebody else, it's almost like a, a checklist, right? A, a board, a scoreboard. Think about a scoreboard and, you know, like, you got this together, check. And you got that together, check. I did this good thing. I did that good thing. I did this over here. I'm, you know, I am pretty good. I'm pretty good. That is not a picture of your worth and value. Your worth and value is based on Jesus, his blood. Amen? It is all about the blood of Jesus covering you, loving you, and calling you into relationship, and then you receive. You receive. And then we learn how to walk worthy of that love, amen, through the Spirit. We're, gonna, we're not going to do that flawlessly, but I thought about how that comparison game stops us all the time. We sit back and we care. Why do we care so much about what somebody else thinks of you? Do you? Do you care what somebody else thinks of you? Sometimes, come on. Be real. <coughs> we do. We sit back and we go like, yeah, I really do care. I want to do something so great. Get yourself off your throne. This is not about you. And quite frankly, if God doesn't want to do something through you, you can work at that all your might, and it's not going to be successful because you're working against what God really wants for you. Amen? If all of us would just find our spots, amen, in the love of God and just do those things that we are most gifted for and most uh, empowered to do, it would be, we'd be unstoppable, but we are playing the comparison game, and we just love to compare ourselves with one another. And if you don't think I'm telling the truth, search your heart carefully. We can all fall into that. On Sunday, we feel really good about ourselves. On Monday, it starts to take a dive. And by Friday and Saturday, we're ready to come back to church to feel better about ourselves. Am I telling the truth? But if you knew your worth and value Wednesday, Thursday, you wouldn't be foundering. You'd go like, well, this was never about me in the first place. This is about what God wants to do for me. He loves me, never lets me go. He is my all in all, and I am going to stand in that place. You and I have to get to the point where we find that worth and value that is God-ordained and God-imparted and not let the world shake us. Because when you and I allow the world to do that to us, we enslave ourselves. God sets us free, and then all of a sudden we find ourselves back in shackles. Come on, somebody get this today. Don't let that happen. And stop comparing yourself. God doesn't like for us to compare ourselves with one another. And that would be like you and I deciding that the fact that God made us unique wasn't a good thing. He made us unique. We are very different individuals, and it was purposeful in the love of God. The very fact that you are different than me and vice versa and all the people around you is a blessing. Turn to the neighbor and tell them they're a blessing. If we were all the same, what a mess. If we all said that, but can I tell you something? We all have the same worth and value if we have Jesus, amen? amen? We all have the same worth and value, and then what we do is we find ourselves living that out in a very unique way before the presence of God. Be happy, be filled, be full, and let God be that, that, that lover of your soul, amen? He just wants to love you. And he wants to make his home and be powerful in you. We all need deliverance of some kind. Paul and Silas needed God to deliver them out of the prison, right? The girl needed to be delivered of an evil spirit. And the guard needed to be delivered from a spirit of, of, of emptiness to the law and to live for righteousness. We all need it. We all do. And unfortunately, we sit back and we don't really believe that. So today, today, let's get real. Let's get real. Let's sit back and go like, God, I need a dose of your love to infuse me so I understand my worth and value. And that the very things that I face, the very things that I face every day that seem to be such a challenge that you know all about them and you're going to work through them. Amen?
Do you believe that God is going to work through all things for your good and for the good of the kingdom? Right now, he's working for the good of the kingdom, isn't he? Isn't he doing that? Your kingdom come. We pray for it all the time, but then we sit back and go like, no, let's just make this about us. Let's, I'm going to make this about me, right? That's ridiculous. It isn't about you. It's about his kingdom and the salvation of his world. Amen? Are you valuable? You bet. Did he die for you personally? Absolutely. Would he do it again? Most assuredly. But he wants you to understand that your worth and value is not found in any other place other than Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen? Wherever you find yourself, whatever you're tasting, whatever's going on in your life, he is more than enough. Amen? He is more than enough. And trust him that he's going to use everything that he takes you to in a powerful way to advance his message. Amen? Amen. Let him be your Lord. Amen? So you all be blessed this week.